on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone. This is Talk TV. We weren't, so my point is, we weren't allowed to tell our story because they didn't want. We've never been asked our story. Until now. No matter how hard I tried, no matter how good I was, they were still going to find a way to destroy me. Being part of this family, it is my duty to uncover this exploitation and bribery that happens within our media. I'm generally concerned um, for the safety of my family. I just really want to get to the other side of all of this. We just really want to get to the other side of all this before we're destroyed. Because everybody's so horrible to us. Oh, shut up. Get your sick buckets ready. Tonight on Piers Morgan Uncensored, it's the nauseating, self-serving snooze fest the whole world is raging about. Live from London, this is Piers Morgan Uncensored. Good evening from London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Tonight, we'll devote the whole show to the impact of Harry and Meghan's attack on the monarchy, on the royal family, on Britain. We're all a bunch of callous racists who've wrecked their lives, which is why they're now living in a mansion in California, earning gazillions of dollars to continue trashing Britain, the royal family and the monarchy. I'll talk exclusively to Meghan's half-brother, Thomas, whose own family were trashed comprehensively again by Meghan in the Netflix documentary, and there'll be live reaction from viewers across the UK. But first, here's my uncensored take. And a warning, tonight's show contains spoilers. Well, Harry and Meghan's Netflix series, released to the world this morning, is packed with, well, not really revelations, are they? It's sort of rehashed old revelations with a new twist. As it turns out, we've apparently been wrong all along. Britain is a nasty, racist hellhole where only magnificent Meghan stood up to all this. And the world's biggest victims are not the people of Ukraine or the people battling COVID or people struggling in a devastating cost of living crisis. No, the world's biggest victims right now are the Duke and Duchess of Netflix. And don't take my word for it. This promise of once you're married, don't worry, it'll get better. Once they get used to you, it'll get better. It, of course, it'll get better. But truth be told, no matter how hard I tried, no matter how good I was, no matter what I did, they were still going to find a way to destroy me. Yeah, nobody set out to destroy you. Uh, you destroyed yourselves in this country with your ludicrous, hypocritical behaviour. Truth be told, what she just said is completely not garbage. Harry and Meghan's romance, engagement and marriage were all greeted with ecstatic joy by the British media, the public and the royal family that they've all now abandoned. That's the truth. Not Harry and Meghan's truth, but the actual truth. The first three hours of this uh, Netflix series paint a very different, far uglier picture of this country and our royal family. Eight days after the relationship became public, I put out a statement calling out the racist undertones of articles and headlines that were written by the British press. And I wasn't thinking about how race played a part in any of this. I genuinely didn't think about it. Some of the members of the family was like, right, but my wife had to go through that. So why should your girlfriend be treated any differently? Why should you get special treatment? Why should she be protected? And I said, the difference here is the race element. I sometimes call the Commonwealth Empire 2.0 because that is what it is. There is a huge level of unconscious bias. The thing with unconscious bias is it's actually no one's fault. But once it's been pointed out or identified within yourself, you then need to make it right. Yep, we're all racist, apparently. Sounds like a different country, but let's be clear, Britain's one of the most tolerant and multicultural nations in the world. We celebrated the glamorous modern flair of the new young royals. We eulogised the newly biracial monarchy as the fresh face of 21st century Britain. I wrote newspaper columns about it myself, including on the day of the wedding. The press and public only turned on Harry and Meghan when their behaviour became obnoxious, self-serving and rankly hypocritical. Sadly, millions of people around the world will watch this series and they'll believe it. They'll believe the smears about Britain and our monarchy, that we're a bunch of bigoted and hateful people. They even blamed Brexit for the racism which apparently was aimed at Meghan Markle, which is just completely absurd. 
But by far the most sickening part of this show for me was the constant use of Harry's late mother, Princess Diana, to stoke sympathy for Meghan. So much of what Meghan is and how she is is so similar to my mum. She has the same compassion, she has the same empathy, she has the same confidence. She has this warmth about her. Who's that? I accept that there will be people around the world who fundamentally disagree with what I've done and how I've done it. But I knew that I had to do everything I could to protect my family. Hey, Grandma. Nothing says protecting a family like putting your kids in a reality TV series, does it? Having known both women, Princess Diana and Meghan Markle, I can say with absolute certainty they had nothing in common whatsoever. I couldn't think of two women more different. When it comes to compassion and empathy, where's Meghan's been for her own father? She completely disowned him, as she did all her wedding, actually, before the wedding. As this series makes clear, he just suffered a stroke a few months ago. Miss Compassion hasn't even bothered to call her father to ask how he is. And the answer, as we'll find out tonight from his son Thomas, is he's not well at all. Harry's never even met the man whose daughter he married. Doesn't care. Mr Empathy, Mr Compassion. Yet this man, Thomas Markle, raised Meghan on his own for many years. That wasn't in the documentary. That was glossed over. That was ignored. Just like he is now. He lives 70 miles away from them. It's about an hour-long cab ride. Never seen his grand grandchildren. This show is packed with a kind of spurious claims and hypocrisy that have become the Sussex signature. We learned they began making videos about the heroic journey six months before their Netflix deal was even announced. And right at the start of a pandemic that was killing thousands of people every day, their only concern was their own situation. How mean everyone was being to them, not thousands of people dying in the streets. Clearly, this is all planned from the start. The show opens with the claim the royal family declined to comment. And in fact, they say no one bothered to ask them. Of course, their biggest complaints are, as always, about the terrible media. Rarely do we have a holiday without someone with a camera, you know, jumping out of a bush or something. Within the family, within the system, the advice that's always given is don't react. There was always public pressure with its fair share of drama, stress, and also tears, and witnessing those tears. There's a lot of people who think yeah, they've got such a problem with, with paparazzi. Safety yeah. first. Worst case scenario, we're going from one garage to another. Like, it's... Paparazzi still harass people. It's amazing what people will do when offered a huge amount of money to hand over photographs, to create a story. Right. So we had to flee the country for family privacy, says Harry, as we watch a $100 million documentary in which he flaunts his young children and shares private text messages, intimate photographs for the entire world to see. When it comes to paparazzi, I have more paparazzi outside my house when I was forced to leave my old job for disbelieving Princess Pinocchio's lies, then I saw actually outside their houses at any stage of this documentary. Maybe their mob scenes are to come. We haven't seen any so far. In fact, all their claims of paparazzi intrusion in the two trailers turned out to be nothing to do with them. They weren't even at many of the events which were depicted. So forgive me if I don't think this is all a load of BS. But frankly, the biggest problem with this series so far is that, like the Sussex themselves, is actually, it's dull, it's predictable, it's cliché-ridden, it's simperingly sycophantic. It's one long rendition of all their greatest whinges and a load of self-congratulatory nonsense. Harry and Meghan sold their royal souls to become reality TV stars, but they haven't got the charisma to carry their own sob story. They're now a grasping ex-royal version of the Kardashians, only with less class, less loyalty and less brains. Well, in a moment, I'll speak to uh, Meghan's half-brother, Thomas Jr., exclusively. Here's a short reminder of what Meghan and Harry said about her father in the show, including a series of supposedly private messages she sent to him when it emerged he was too ill to attend their wedding. Paps and journalists and media were following him all day, every day. The unraveling happened that week when he wouldn't pick up my call. 
and instead you're talking to TMZ. He had a heart attack six days ago. Which um, is crazy. Uh, calling, uh, calling, uh, calling, 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 calling. This is not him saying, oh, I don't want to be there. No, no, I get it. I, I'm not saying wants, and the world is watching this drama play out. Of course, it's incredibly sad what happened. She had a father before this, and now she doesn't have a father. Well, joining me now is Megan's half-brother, Thomas Mulga. Thomas, thank you for joining me. Um, first of all, uh, how is your father, Thomas Sr.? Oh, hey, guys, it's good to be here. Um, Dad is doing very well, uh, making a lot of progress. He's in good spirits. Um, sometimes he doesn't feel that comfortable to actually make a live appearance, but uh, he's doing very well. You're there caring for him. He had a massive I'm... stroke, and I think at one stage for quite a while he lost the power of his speech. Has that returned now? Is he able to communicate with you? Yeah, his, uh, his speech is, is definitely coming back. We're making a lot of progress with the speech therapy. And, and you know, if for the most part, it's, it's pretty normal. It just it, it goes off after a few moments, but comes back. So it, it's, he's doing very well. I'm, I'm just very happy that I could be here every day for him since, since this happened in May or, or what, about six months ago. Were you both watching the, the, the first half of this series today? Uh, let's see. I think, I think he was, he wasn't able to join us though. I mean, he really wanted to be here. Um, I was watching it and, you know, I'm just glad I had my studio magic tear pen with me so I could have a tear come out of my left eye while I was watching it. I mean, that moment when Prince Harry, who's never met your father, says that Meghan has no father. What did you think of that? Uh, I think it's horrible. Um, the documentary is so far off on so many different levels. So many, it's just, it really, it's really a little bit disturbing. Um, saying that, you know, she doesn't have a family and she doesn't have a father. And then Harry saying that, uh, you know, she has no father now. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly hurtful. I also have always had sympathy with your father because I felt that he was thrown to the wolves with no experience of dealing with this kind of media, intensive media attention. He tried to do the right thing. He came unstuck and they just disowned him. Um, has she made any attempt to yeah. contact your father since he had his stroke? None whatsoever. And, you know, I totally agree with you on, on the fact that none of us were ever coached or given any help with the paparazzi or press since the very beginning, which has caused a lot of problems. Um, Nobody reached out. I actually reached out, and and all I got back was distant family, and she doesn't know us, which is just, you know, it's just very bizarre how she just basically brushed the entire family under the carpet like we don't exist and then lied about not having a family and lied about, you know, she doesn't have a family that she's always wanted. You know, we've always been here. It's... Documentary is way off. I mean, that's that's what's actually prompted me to work with my own production team, um, and coming out in like 2023, we're gonna have you know our side of the doc, uh, our side of a documentary that's gonna shed a lot of light. Well, I don't blame you. I mean, if this, uh, was, if this was one of my fa this was one of yeah. my family doing this to, to yeah. my family, I'd want to do the same thing and set the record straight. Yes. It just seems to me that she has decided you're all too big a problem. Therefore, you have to be cut loose. And I've got to be yeah. honest, I, I knew Megan for a bit before she met Harry. Did exactly the same to me. Bang, you know, done. She did that to many people that she knew, that she'd either worked with or was friends with or whatever. It just seems to me she's what I would call a ruthless social climber, who just when people are no longer, yeah. you know, no longer appropriate parts of her circle, they have to be expunged quickly so she can move on up the ladder. Absolutely. And I think a lot of greed plays into that fact also. I mean, the amount of unprecedented files, photos, videos, and documentation that, that we're going to be including in our documentary, it's going to tell a whole different story. And I think the, the, I think the general public and the UK and America knows that now the Markles aren't bad people. We're, we're just like a normal family like everybody else. We do exist. And when, when one person 
tells lies and then tells 10 other lies to cover the one lie and it keeps on going, you know, this is what happens. You, you, you end up looking ridiculous. There's a staggering moment, Thomas, where um, Ashley, who is, I think, your niece, who's uh, Samantha's daughter, uh, befriended Megan and was going to go to the wedding. And then Megan is apparently advised by some flunky at the palace that wouldn't be a good idea because Samantha's not invited. So this happens. How do we explain that this half-sister isn't invited to the wedding, but that the half-sister's daughter is? And so, with Ashley, the guidance at the time was to not have her come to our wedding. I think I said I was hurt on some level, but I understood where it was coming from to know that it was because of my biological mother that this relationship that's so important to me was impacted in that way. To feel like because of her it was taken away has been hard. Yeah, actually, it was because of Megan that it was taken away. Megan could have had her there if she wanted to have her there. Instead, she wanted to have a bunch of celebrities she barely knew from the Clooney's to the Beckham's to Elton John to James Gordon to Tim Buck too. I mean, it looked like anyone she'd met on the party circuit in the previous two years got the invite, but a lot of Harry's friends weren't there, and nor was this niece who she makes a big thing in the documentary saying we were so close. Yeah. Well, I mean, there you have it. You know, one lie turns into 20 other lies. She didn't have a family, so therefore nobody was invited. I mean... I mean, who doesn't invite their family to a wedding, right. especially a royal wedding? And it's not like it's not like anybody in my family asked her for one nickel or anything of her. We were all actually like happy for her when all this happened. But the slow turn of events showed the true colors of this woman. What, when you when you finish watching today, the, these first three episodes, what was your kind of overview about what's happened to, to Megan? And indeed, what you think of Harry? Well, my general overview is I can't believe that she was able to be in this position, all by my father's doing, by the way, to be in that position and to know what you're getting yourself into and then go in there and try and change a thousand-year-old tradition and monarchy to, to, to your own liking. Who does that? Um, it's, it's, still, it's still a big question. I mean, my father and I, we talk about it quite a bit. It's like, I mean, how could you even, even consider doing that? You were, everything every woman in their life could ever dream of, you had. And you had to go and make waves and accusations and be difficult. And overall, you know, taking Harry away from his family. Right. Yeah, I'm afraid I think um, it's completely disgraceful. Like I said... Um, Thomas, I've got to leave it there. Thank you very much I mean, indeed for joining I'm... me. Please send your father my best, won't you? Because I've been concerned about him. Um, I'm glad to hear he's, he's on the mend. Absolutely. But, uh, obviously been a scary time for you and the family. Please send him my very best. Absolutely. Will do. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Good to talk to you. Well, joining me now is the Royal Under the Standard, uh, Robert Jobson and Professor of Black Studies at Birmingham University, Shahendi Andrews. Welcome to both of you. Robert, I mean, pretty startling, isn't it, when you hear her own half-brother talking that way about this and how they feel as a family. It's startling, it's upsetting, I'm sure, for them. I mean, you know, they do seem, when they're on the television, to be fairly normal people. Right. And, uh, you know, Thomas Barkle Sr. has come in for an awful lot of criticism for when he, you know, allegedly sold out the way he did, but there was no support for him at the time. None. And I think that he did need that support. And but I don't but think how can you been... call yourself Miss Compassion? How can Harry say she's so like Diana, who really was full yeah, of compassion, yeah. and not even contact your father when he brought you up on his own for years when he has a massive stroke? Well, as you said, it wasn't even mentioned that he brought her up on his own for no. years in the documentary. I thought the documentary didn't really address some of the big issues that, that mm. were out there. Harry talks about institutional racism at the, at the palace. He doesn't address the fact. I remember I did a story years ago when he... You know, he made racist comments about a, a, a Pakistani. He called cadet. it the P word. Yeah, he did, and he, and he tape recorded it and distributed that tape yeah. to all his friends. Now that actually is not 
Harry I'm, himself I'm, has actually a, been the biggest proven racist that, in modern royal history. That, that, is, you know, that is a clear case of it. Yeah, yeah. He's accusing everybody else of, oh, it's our unconscious. But that mm. wasn't particularly unconscious. It's perfectly conscious. You know, he, he recorded it, he did it, he mocked the guy, and the guy's father was furious. Kehinde Andrews, my problem with all these racism claims, which they keep spewing, is it's all generic. There are no specifics. There's no meat on the bone. There's no names. There's no incidents. There's nothing we can point to which actually says anyone in the royal family has been racist to them or anybody else. Now, without that, why should we believe a word they're saying? Well, this is what institutional racism is. The whole point is that you don't need to have somebody waving a Nazi flag to be racist. It's about the way she was treated in the press. It's about the way she was treated by the family. It's about the way she was restricted in her role. It's about her true colour being black and that being black didn't fit into the What's it got family. to do with her skin colour? I'm going to come back you... to it again. What does it got to do What's with that? her skin colour? Who at the royal family said so for... anything racist about or to Meghan Markle. We don't know. We've not been told. No one well, in knows. Fairness, in, in, well, in fairness, they've tried, in fairness, they have actually tried to defend the family because someone did raise the colour of the baby and they didn't say who that was. We could, we could guess That's not speculate. defending the, the family. That's smearing all of them. Racism is. That's smearing all of them. They've no, never said who it was. No, so everyone is in the someone frame. under the bus. But... No, but the point is, it's not about one thing. So if you look at her media pre- present, like when she that first story when she came when it came out, they were dating straight out of Compton. I mean, that's oh, one, one headline in an otherwise gang- positive feature, which actually was wrong by nine miles. It wasn't miles. a positive. That was she actually positive, came, she was, actually came from an area of it. Listen, Plus, I know Kehinde. I know LA. I know where Compton is. I know where she was brought up. It's mm-hmm. about eight, nine miles away. The story was off by eight, nine miles. Exactly. The feature wasn't actually remotely wasn't the, derogatory wasn't the about her. No, but Peter, this, you look at. They have to look at the, the. For example, you're saying that she was a diva. She was. She was. She was mean to people. She was. No, no, she wasn't. She was just acting in a way that many royals act. But she became seen as this aggressive black woman. She's a diva. That's racism. That's I don't. What I've never seen anybody call like. her an aggressive and she was black woman. Hang on, Kehinde again. I never saw anybody use her mm-hmm. colour in the British media as a stick to attack her ever. Never saw it. It never happened. So it's an say, absolute say, lie. So you Nor have I seen say, any evidence that anyone say. in the royal family was ever racist to either of them. So there are a number of people who've put together comparisons. You know, how is Kate treated? Kate does one thing and it's treated this way. Meghan does one thing, it's treated a different way. Kate has is what millions of negative like. headlines. Nobody goes around saying the N-word anymore. And you're saying it's Nobody only said because the of anymore. Meghan's get skin colour? Really? What I would say, well, I mean, I think when you have an institution which is overwhelmingly white, which is only a story she's in it because she's black in the first place, if she wasn't black, we wouldn't be talking about all of this, where who then treats her in a way which is clearly problematic, she then leaves and says, look, I experienced racism and thought about committing suicide, it was so bad, I think we would have to say, yeah. Well, I want to see the evidence of that too, I'm afraid, because she said said a senior person at Buckingham Palace told her she couldn't have help for her suicidal thoughts because it would be bad for the brand of the palace. Who was that person and when did that conversation happen? That because like you, a lot of what Meghan but, Markle says, this is, none of it is borne out by actual evidence. It's just her no, saying it, playing the mental health evidence. and suicide there card, is lots of playing evidence. the race card, damaging the monarchy, damaging the royal, family. the royal family. There is lots of evidence that the royal family's press machine is essentially like the mafia and you can't just say what you like. They're like I the think mafia. You know I mean, this suggests that that's not true. The mafia was that's a ridiculous murderous you can group just say whatever of people you like. who, who killed people for fun. Is that what you're and likening you, the, British, the, 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 the British the British royal... royal... Well, the Royal Firm African, too? can I just, can I just point out the Royal African, the Royal African Company was the company which enslaved the most people that look like me in the history of this planet. So actually, yes, the Royal Family actually does have a murderous past. And it's a racist past and a deeply colonial past. So actually, yes. Right. The royal you think they're still murdering people? It's not people, morally you? in a superior position. Do you think they're still the murdering family. people? I think the point. How many people have the Royal Family murdered the, in your I lifetime, think the point is it? it? How many people has the system that your royal family represent murdered in my lifetime? Millions, actually. I mean, this is the problem, right? We it's talk not, about the Commonwealth. It's only a problem if you like think they're still a, this, doing this, it. This benign thing. It's only a problem if you think they're still doing it. Well, I mean, I think we talk about something like that. They're not, are they? Um, look, let me go back to how many, this. Well, is no, the how problem, many? The problem how is many? Okay, anyway, let's go get a Robert for a second. The problem with these conversations is that, again, there's no substance to it other than go back in history and say that hundreds of years ago, the colonial Britain, led by the royal family, behaved in a bad way. We know that, and they've been apologising throughout the last 60 years for it. Yeah, but, I mean, this is also about accuracy, isn't it? And we, this, this documentary, I, I can only speak as I find. There was one particular moment 
where I was on a pool position in South Africa inside Archbishop Tutu's compound, his house, and they used that photograph of them walking away, holding the baby, to say, with a lens in the, in the picture, to suggest that that was intrusive by the paparazzi. The We're narrative. seeing the picture here now. And that's the narrative. That photograph was taken with three people standing there on the pool position. I was standing next to Sarah Latham, and, you know, I'll name them, Sarah Latham, the press secretary, who had arranged the position with them. And so they that was went, all official, all agreed. And then we went from there into the, into Archbishop, the yeah. late Archbishop Tutu's house where they had tea and showed the baby again. The press couldn't show pictures of that baby under the regulations mm. that we now have agreed of since course. the death of Diana. And what upsets me about this documentary and everything else is they've used all of these things. Harry says he can't remember a lot about his childhood with Diana apart from the fact that there were a lot of paparazzi. Mm. Yet he's, he's utilising Diana, the fame of Diana in this documentary. Yeah, it's disgusting. And he's utilising that to get an old narrative across. And the British media has changed enormously. And by the way, there. the reason he's doing it is he's getting $90 million well, from Netflix, line. right? Well, that's bottom line. He's doing the very thing he's accused the tabloids of doing when his mother was alive, which is using her, her image and everything about and her... And the Panorama for, interview. ...for commercial gain. Right, exactly. And the Panorama Robert, interview. Robert, good to leave you there. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Kehinde, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Coming next, Harry and Meghan wield Princess Diana's memories as we just discussed to defend their actions and claims. But does that comparison have any credibility at all? We'll have guests including Paul Burrell to debate that. We're on here in five minutes. Yeah, no, just get me some stress, it's fine. Sam Allardyce is here, everybody. You've got someone out in guitar for me? Hey, you're definitely out there, right? Yeah, 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 I'm out here. So I need some A-listers on the show, right? Howard's getting 5,000 quid. Louis <laughs> <laughs> Seaton's in the stadium. Well, he's getting all the laughs. Would you go back in football? If it was the Wolves, I'd go back into football, but I can't speak Portuguese. <laughs> I thought we'd be able to get a beer out here. I can. <laughs> Great, I'll <laughs> say we put that up there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> He's back and he's uncensored. Debating the breaking news and talking to the biggest names. Piers Morgan is live every week with a host of stars. Uncompromising, unmissable, and uncensored. And remember if you're thinking it, we're talking about it. Piers Morgan, uncensored, Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m. on Talk TV. of what Megan is and how she is, is so similar to my mum. 
she has the same compassion, she has the same empathy, she has the same confidence, she has this warmth about her. Well, <laughs> joining me now, a royal correspondent for Vanity Fair, Katie Nicholl, Princess Diana's former butler, Paul Burrell, and historian and author, Dr. Tessa Dunlop. Well, Paul, oh. you and I, I had lunch with Princess Diana and a young Prince William, who's 13, at Buckingham Palace, at Kensington Palace, I'm sorry. You were the butler, mm -hmm. served a very nice meal, I, I have to say. I had two hours with Diana, and she was completely charming, mm -hmm. compassionate, empathetic, and all those things. Mm. I also knew Meghan Markle who, in my estimation from everything that happened before, during and after, when I knew her, is a complete piece of work, mm -hmm. devoid of any real compassion, witness her father and the family, uh, devoid of empathy, uh, who's taken this prince away from his family now and is trying to exploit the royal titles for maximum gain. Mm -hmm. That is not what Diana did. No. She never was in it for personal gain. Not a penny. When you heard Harry say that, has he lost his mind? I, I'm, I, I, I'm gobsmacked. You cannot compare Princess Diana to Meghan. They are two totally different creatures in totally different spaces at totally different times. And if you had lived with her for ten years, mm. as I did, I can honestly say there is no comparison but to Princess Diana. Just none. Paul, I none. mean, Harry's a man in love. He's in love with Meghan and his memory of Diana is one from he's when short. he was a 10 and 11 year old boy. Yes. Is he in love or is he as Donald Trump oh, told me? Love. Have we got the Donald Trump clip? Oh, do we have to play the Donald Trump clip? Yeah. Have we got it? This is what Donald Trump said. It wasn't really love he thought was the problem. Let's listen to this. Here we go. It's coming. It's the magic of live television. Harry is whipped. Do you know mm. the expression whipped? I'm familiar with the phrase. I won't use the full expression. <laughs> but Harry is whipped like no person I think I've ever seen. <laughs> the most whipped man in the world. This is, I don't know. That's going to be a big one. But he is, he is a whipped man, yeah. Yeah, the full Again, expression is he's pussy whipped. I don't want to take uh, my advice on romance and love from two Neanderthal men over 50. Quite mm. frankly, I think you're all missing the point. I thought the main takeaway message, which you could learn from, and all three of us could probably be humiliated by, was the relationship, the crony relationship, between the British press and the palace. There's mutual dependency which was there that's massively, corrupting. Sorry. Which, no, it's corrupting. It may, has been throughout the 20th century. If I may ask century. you, as a former tabloid newspaper editor for yes. 10 years, yes. I know more about that relationship than you do with no, great respect. No, historically, I probably well, know Well, actually, more than you do, because I was on the sharp end I of it. I can test that. The please. idea that somehow there was well, some collusion... <laughs> Collusion between the newspapers and the journalists well, can and Buckingham I just, Palace. Can I it's just jump in? Having, done, it's, it's, having covered, sorry, having covered the royals for the best part of fifteen years, let me just tell you. And it, one of the things that annoyed me so much mm. in what Harry said was the idea that we are just a royal rotor that are just drip-fed material from the house. Mm. If only it was that easy. But His contempt for the British but by the, media but by the way, is so. By apparent. the way, what about this? This is a guy whining about the media. What's he, what's he done since he well, left royal duty? The media, right? he? He's now on James Corden's bus top. He's doing Oprah Winfrey. He's yeah. doing a Netflix but, reality but show. Fair, the guy yes. never stays off of no, using the media. He's doing it on All his he wanted was cash. And what we need to be honest about is the conservative, predominantly conservative press, rely on access to the royal family for their scoops, for their biographies. Even I, as a historian, oh, if I go too far, will I get into the royal archive? The truth is, it's compromising. And if we'd all done our job properly, maybe there would be a royal the household is, which has the more truth than 10% ethnic minority the truth employees. Is that, the truth is that Harry has always attacked tabloids, including ones that I used to edit, for exploiting the royal family for commercial gain. Now he is exploiting his hatred of the royal family for commercial gain, even using his own mother, yeah. the late Princess Diana, to do that for money, for hard dollars. I concede well, that Harry and it is, is yes. far disgusting from perfect. hypocrisy. And I concede he's his not mother, His mother, his mother would be very unhappy. She'd be furious about what is happening now because it upsets William, it upsets Kate, um, and those boys had a pact that these interviews would not be shown again on national television. And they used particularly from the, the Bashir. Well, let me bring in. We've got, we've got a, a stellar uh, panel of ordinary members of the public here, all of whom have strong opinions. We won't get to all of you, and you know that. But I want to go to Fran Foley-Winston, who's in Dublin. Fran, what was your take on what we saw today? 
it was just so cringe worthy. I don't know how they managed to get six episodes. It was halfway through, and they weren't even engaged yet. You know, I don't think they dated that long in real life. Ridiculous. So you weren't impressed. No, and I'm actually I'm in a group where uh, messenger groups coming up. Frank, we're having a problem with your with your link there. I'm going to try and come back to you a bit later. Let's go now to uh, we're going to go to Nicola Myers. What is your view? You have a different view, I think, Nicola. Um, okay, so my view of the Netflix series, as it happens this morning, I've actually watched episode one, two, and three back to back. Um, and I loved it. Okay. I absolutely loved it. Before I watched it, I wasn't sure of my opinion of everything that had gone on with Meghan and Harry and if they were set out to jeopardize the British monarchy. Um, after watching it, I, I, I'm on their side. I'm for Meghan and Harry. Why? I absolutely am. Why? The madly in love. The, the madly in love. I'm very happy the for them. Family, Why trash the their families? Why trash their families? Why trash the families? Yeah. The, I don't think they've purposely set out to trash their they families. They literally purposely set Harry's out to trash their families. Harry's got scared of all the racial... Harry, Harry has got scared of all the um, racial abuse um, that the love of his life was getting. He, he saw it happening, what had happened to his mother, where his mother got murdered. And and he's he's panicked. They've gone well, she they've died in a car crash. She wasn't he doesn't murdered. want to um, see that happen. OK, again. Let, let me go to Magali Gore, who's in... Uh, well, Ch we, well no, it's Oh, we haven't got Magali. I'm sorry. We'll come, back to, we'll come back to another one of our panel in a moment. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Lots of different reactions. I've heard some people say they like them and they support them. You see that on social media a lot. I've got to say, walking around today, I didn't meet anyone in Kensington on the streets who was anything but furious. Yes. I've not had anyone on my Twitter feed coming in saying saying that at all, and people saying we're going to cancel our Netflix subscription. There seems to be a real reaction against it. It's a clear it, exploitation of Princess Diana's image. Mm. It's very anti-British. I'm going to own that. That really struck me this morning in my little British home. I thought, gosh, I felt almost like I was under siege. And I'm fairly neutral in terms of, you know, wh where my affections lie, whether it's for the royals or for... Well, I, was watching, Ultimately, I was watching with my wife, Celia. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday to my wife. Um, and we couldn't think of a better way to enjoy her birthday than to spend three hours watching those whining little brats in Montecito. But we sat and watched it, and about halfway through, we turned to it and went, God, this is really boring, isn't it? And the reason it was boring was because they were repeating so much of the rehash stuff which we heard on Oprah. It's like it's the same. It's like Elvis playing all his old but hits, and he's not quite as good. But they're this not time. appealing to you. The voyeuristic. Oh, let's have a look in their Montecito home. Oh, they met on Instagram. All those aspects. To be fair, Piers, I mean it's going to the generation below even me, okay. let alone you. So well, let's go. Let's go. Audience. All right, we can go to Magali Gore now. Who's Gore? I'm sorry, Magali Gore, who's in Cheshire. Magali, I think you can hear me now. What's your view? Yes. Hi, hi. Well, to be fair, I, I, I have double feelings about it. But one feeling that I can say is that, uh, as you can see, I'm a woman, I'm brown. And when I saw royalty getting in love and she was a brown mm -hmm. princess because yeah. she became a princess, uh, the, the, the door went open for so many dreams of little girls yes. like me. When I was young uh, and I was raised in a very white community, uh, racist, racist. Now, sometimes people are not... Uh, used to how you look like they're not used to how you um, what your roots are or what your background is or that you handle things maybe differently um, I loved the wedding for example uh, the wedding was a bit American uh, well I agree with you like music, I wrote all, the, I wrote all um, this uh, Magali I wrote a big piece for the okay, mail good. on Sunday saying exactly what you've just been saying uh -huh. I think that was the general mood of this country yeah. that's why I'm mm. so angry that they're exactly. now trying to make out they were driven out by mm. racist Britain, racist royals, racist media. None of that was true. Now, what, what did you think now, having watched it today? What's your view of them now? Um, it is a repeat from a lot of things. And I have to be honest to you, still, we cannot really feel what she felt. I only know that when you're coming in an institution that where she comes in, and a family that is a very strong, a very serious family, a very... You know, 
the, look at the queen. She is born to do this, you know. So okay. this is what you do. This is what you're gonna live. And then there comes a girl from America that thinks with an American background to the red carpet. Oh, I'm gonna make it now. Look at me. No, 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 no. You have to live like the protocols. Yeah. And I think that's a struggle. And then okay, Magali, I'm gonna leave it there. Like I, how, I get your point. I've, I've got to leave it there. Yeah. I'm going to take a break, but thank okay. you for that. I'm going to come back after the break, and we'll talk more about this, particularly also Meghan Markle mocking the moment she met the Queen and had to curtsy, and Harry's response. Does it get any more disrespectful than that? We'll talk about it after the break. Five minutes. Yeah, no, just get rid of some stress, it's fine. Sam Allardyce is here, everybody. You've got someone out in guitar for me? Okay, you're definitely out there, right? Yeah, 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 I'm out here. I need some A-listers on the show, right? Howard's getting 5,000 quid. Louis <laughs> <laughs> Singles in the stadium. Well, he's getting all the laughs. <laughs> Would you go back into football? If it was the Wolves, yeah, I'd go back into football, but I can't speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd be able to get a beer out here. I can. <laughs> Great, I'll say we put that up there. A... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> back and he's uncensored debating the breaking news and talking to the biggest names Piers Morgan is live every week with a host of stars uncompromising unmissable and uncensored and remember if you're thinking it we're talking about it Piers Morgan uncensored Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m. on talk TV is Talk TV. There is no class in some person who goes sit like this, cross your legs like this, use this fork, don't do this, curtsy then, wear this kind of hat. The doesn't happen. And I remember in the car and driving up and he said, you know how to curtsy, right? And I just thought it was a joke. I mean, Americans will understand this. We have medieval times, dinner and tournament. It was like that. Like, I curtsied as though I was like... <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Your Majesty. Yeah, nice, right? Mocking our queen, mocking uh, the fact she had to show her respect by just learning how to curtsy properly. It's not, not hard to learn, is it, if you're marrying into the family? Well, joining me now is the editor of Hollywood Unlocked, Jason Lee, niece of Martin Luther King Jr., Arvida King, and conservative radio host Ben Ferguson. I still have uh, Paul and Katie with me. So, 
Um, let me start with you, if I may, Ben Ferguson. What does America make of this? I mean, surely they're not <laughs> falling for this, are they? Yeah, can, can you please come get your Kardashians? That's number one. Number two, uh, it seems like these two individuals that are obsessed with being private people and being out of the public eye are actually a bunch of narcissists that are totally obsessed with being in the public eye. It was a crybaby special. I mean, I, I, full disclosure, I could only watch so much of it, Piers, before I said, give me a break, rolled my eyes and moved on with my life. So I would say if you want to waste three hours of your life, and you love drama, and your soap opera isn't coming in, watch this, because it's amazing. Yeah. But this rewriting of, of history through their eyes, like they're some, somehow victims, they're not victims. She's crazy, and she's trying to destroy a family here. And I, and, and I, I used to kind of feel sorry for Harry. I don't anymore. No. Because he's sitting there doing it with her. Like, yeah. you can even see at the curtsy moment that you just came in with here. He looks at her almost like she's crazy. And maybe in three or four or five years, she'll realize yeah, I, this woman I thought has that was destroyed the moment. my life. Yeah, I think that's the moment we'll look back on. I suspect, in a couple of years, and that'll be a tipping point. Let's go to Alveda King. Alveda King, Dr. King is one of my all-time heroes, as he is many people. He truly was somebody who stood up to racial injustice, racial inequality, like nobody in modern times, uh, and it cost him his life. The idea that these two are in any way, on any level, people doing similar stuff is to me fanciful. They're just sitting there in a mansion in California, spray gunning their families, uh, calling them a bunch of callous, vile races without any evidence, aren't they? Um, hey, do I just jump in? Well, here's... With that, with that person you said. I don't like it. Off you go. Hi. Hi, Alvita. Off you go. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, well, here I am. I grew up with the Princess and the Pea, Cinderella... Lately, Wakanda forever and, and exploring all these various cultures. And so there is no happily ever after in Cinderella land if you're from two different cultures. And so what we have is a cultural confusion on Megan's part. And she wants to superimpose her culture on her husband and their family. And that just doesn't work. But I'm remindful of my uncle, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we must learn to live together as brothers, and I'll say as sisters, or perish together as fools. Now, there's only one blood and one human race, and so to put racism into everything doesn't necessarily ring true either. And really, Britain had a queen, I think it was Prince Queen Sophie, who was part German and part black African person. So it's not like the uh, monarchy is opposed to skin color, but there's only one blood and one race. But I think M Megan is mixing maybe Hollywood fantasy and her pain of what she wants to see. But you can't topple a whole line of traditions based on pain. But past pain, there is communication. It takes a, some guts to even speak out and say some of these things. But we want to bring this back into a reality. And I think that's the problem. Alveda, that's one of the most brilliant analysis I've heard, actually, of the whole Farago. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Um, okay. I want to bring in Jason Lee now. You, you fall for all this. You think they're great heroes and deserve all the awards they're getting and they're freedom fighters standing up to the oppressive Brits. Do you? Well, I'm not obsessed with them to the point that I'm following every move that they're making, but I have watched the documentary, and so far, I, I love it. And I'm somebody who's black and white, and, you know, I've listened to some of the people on the show today. The guy who started at the top of this segment has just annoyed me. You can tell he probably doesn't have much love in his life. And the woman before the last segment, she was probably a bit oversized and unattractive. Awesome kids, dude. Doesn't really Sorry, sound like she had... Hold on, truth. wait. We already heard what you had to say. Clearly you're mad that there's black well, blood in the bloodline for the royal family. But I'm since you want right to talk about... You. If you want to talk about racism me, in the UK... Let's talk about the racism in UK thing because the blood Pierce, diamonds at Buckingham Palace have not been returned. I said You're nothing very about consumed racism. with the man who's in love with a black woman. That's the problem that you have. No. But this is the deal. I, I, I love that. Wait, wait. Wait a minute. That, wait a minute. Time, 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 time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Unity. Unity. Color but here's perfect. the deal. Everybody got to talk before me. Everybody got to talk before me. You can't all talk at once. Jason, here's the problem, Jason. 
It's when you get to the specifics of who in the royal family has actually been racist. There is no answer. There's no evidence. There are no facts. It's all just smear by association. They're racist. They're blind to it all. They're unconsciously biased. Blah, blah, blah. Where is the meat on the bone? Where are the facts? Well, we haven't seen it all yet, and I think that we have to let them tell their story, right? We're both in the media. One thing I love about you, Piers, you say what you feel, what you think, what it, regardless of how people feel, and I think they should be given the same freedom. We enjoy talking about them, let them tell their story so we can talk about their story. I, I look at their love story from their point of view, and I look at how it's been reported, and I can enjoy it all without feeling, you know, getting in my feelings. I think that how she described meeting the queen, I don't know how I would have felt if I would have met the queen. I didn't have that privilege privilege, but I probably would have been nervous too. And I don't know what preparation went on. I mean, what we're looking at is very public people who are under scrutiny, who had private lives, and now we're seeing what that yeah, looks like. You know what, Jason? She, she, met, the the queen, she met the Queen privately, and she was with the Queen's grandson, who probably does know how you greet the Queen. <laughs> so, exactly. Exactly. Exa- 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 um, so that was, that was a great. That was a great panel. I want to thank Jason. Wait, but in all fairness, in all fairness, and just for the record, wait, 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 Ben Ferguson. I think you would like to just clarify. You do have. You do. I get it. Alvina, one second, Ben. Just to clarify, you do have love in your life, yeah. Yes, yes, I have a wife that loves me, three children that love me, and I said nothing well, about rapes in I've got my comments. I've got to leave it there. Yeah. Thank you to my panel. Thank you very much indeed. We'll be back after the break. Get our verdicts here from Katie and Paul. We're on air in five minutes. Yeah, no, just get me some stress, it's fine. Sam Allardyce is here, everyone. You've got someone out in guitar for me? Okay, you're definitely out there, right? Yeah, 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 I'm out here. So I need some A-listers on the show, right? Howard's getting 5,000 quid. Marie Seaton's in the stadium. Well, they get all the laughs. <laughs> Would you go back into football? If it was the Wolves job, I'd go back into football, but I can't speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd be able to get a beer out here. I can. <laughs> Great, I'll say we put that up. There's a... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> He's back and he's uncensored. Debating the breaking news and talking to the biggest names. Piers Morgan is live every week with a host of stars. Uncompromising, unmissable, and uncensored. And remember if you're thinking it, we're talking about it. Piers Morgan, uncensored, Monday to Thursday at 8 p.m. on Talk TV.
Welcome back. Got a note from my sister in the break there. Uh, she, my, my, her husband, my brother-in-law, used to be the person in charge of training William and Harriet Sandhurst Military Academies. All the royals used to go down there, training for their passing out parades. I thought you ought to know that, having seen the royal family in action in private, after the passing out parades, they're the most loving, affectionate, relaxed people, just like any other normal family. We watched them all hug each other, tease each other. It was lovely to be a part of. I witnessed it at both Harry and William's passing out parades. Megan is talking absolute bleep. Thank you, Charlotte, my sister. Um, we're all pretty much the same in my family, uncensored. Let me go to Sam Sarah quickly in Canterbury. Very quickly, Sam Sarah, your view. My view is it's fascinating, just like you said. It's a big statement that says nothing's wrong with me, nothing's wrong with us. We're normal people. We've had an experience. And the thing that Harry talks about is unconscious bias. So I know you've mentioned racism and perhaps it's not being called out just yet explicitly in the documentary, but it's the blind spots. It's the areas where people might well be well-meaning, but in fact, underlying that are some prejudices okay. and, and judgments that that's may not really point. be I, appropriate. I, OK, that's a good point. Uh, Katie, your overview, really, from all the discussions we've had. I mean, we haven't mentioned yet the little digs that were going on about... Kate and William, yeah, you know, there the were people, jigs. you know, fitting the mould wives. Were jigs. Well, he said, you know, that the men in the family have married women who fit the mould. Mm. Well, I think you can look at William and Kate and their 10-year love story yeah. before they even married and say this is one of the most enduring love stories of, yes. of royal history. And respectful of the institution, Very which gives them the luxurious the life they have. But apparently, you know, the, they were cool towards, yeah. you know, the couple. And, and there was that... Well, because when Meghan from... Markle was for the first time, she's barefoot and wants to hug them all. Yeah. It's like... She's a 36-year-old divorcee. So I'll probably give her a bit of a wide berth myself. Yeah. Paul. Remember respect. Don't trash the royal family. Uh, we love them here in England. Uh, they're our institution. Remember what your mother would say to you. Your mother would say to you, Harry, I'm proud of you for being a member of our royal family. I'm proud of your brother. I always thought that you'd be his wingman. And she was very proud to be a princess. I've got letters at home that say... Diana, Diana I want would to. absolutely hate the rift with William and Harry. Absolutely. And the fact that they would go on national television now for the second time yes. and trash William and Kate mm. and Charles mm. and all of it, just, Stop it would be it. And I think her. the way Harry has monopolised mm. Diana and her legacy, and can you imagine how that must feel for the Prince yeah. of Wales? Yes. It, she was both of their mother, and he's yes. taking... And by the way, they've just lost the Queen. Yeah. Right? They're all still grieving the loss of our greatest monarch. Respect. Thank you both very much. Come back next week for part two. That's it from me. Whatever you're up to, keep it uncensored. Good night. Five minutes. Yeah, no, I'm just getting rid of some stress, it's fine. Sam Allardyce is here, everybody! You've got someone out in Qatar for me? Okay, you're definitely out there, right? Yeah, 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 I'm out here. Yeah. So I need some A-listers on the show, right? Howard's getting 5,000 quid. Marie Seaton from Stadium. Well, they're getting all the laughs. <laughs> Would you go back into football? If it was the Wolves job, I'd go back into football, but I can't speak Portuguese. <laughs> I thought we'd be able to get a beer out here. I can. Great, I'll <laughs> we put that up there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>